So welcome back, everybody. This is a new series. We've got Rochelle Kopp back yes. in Japan, and we, we had to record another series because there were so many awesome questions and requests right. that came up. Lots of great stuff. That's true. And as everyone noticed, you know, although we recorded 12 episodes, we barely scratched the surface, really, of all the topics that we were talking about, and people had so much extra stuff to ask. So we had to come back and do this again. Exactly. We're glad to be here. So, um, yes, this new series, which uh, I'm going by the provisional title, although I guess if I say it out loud, it becomes the title. It's so the title now, I think, yes. It has to be short, it has to be pithy, it has to be controversial and sexy all at the same time. So I'm going with uh, It's Business Time. Uh, maybe the Japanese, maybe we'll call it Business Time. I'm, I'm business it, Time. It's Business Time. That's kind of cool. It makes, it, sound, it makes me feel like a Tarento when I talk like that. <laughs> So, uh, well, you are a talent, though, well, aren't you? Thank you. Thank you. Well, I don't, <laughs> in my own very humble way. So uh, it's business time with Rochelle Kopp back in Japan. And uh, we are going to be talking today's topic, the first topic. We're going to be talking about what's up with Rochelle and uh, talking about the first topic, which is from El Camedo and the question that he asked on the original video series. So hang around. <laughs> Welcome back to Japan. Thanks, glad to be here. Very good to see you again, as always, and it's great to catch up. And uh, that we're using, we, we always have these awesome conversations when we meet up in a cafe or something, we meet up for lunch, and we've found a much more productive, economically efficient way <laughs> of having our catch up conversation. It's funny, even as we were setting up, we were saying, Okay, let's not talk about that interesting story right, that right, we're right. about to start we telling. We started telling these really great conversations and so we stop, stopped stop, them because we wanted stop. to share them with you. We'll waste it. We'll waste, we'll waste yeah. the, uh, the spontaneity. Exactly. So here we are brimming with, with pent up spontaneity waiting to talk. Um, one of the questions that came up over and over and uh, El Camedo asked it, but I, I had other people quietly like message me and say, uh, how do I get Rochelle's job? I don't think they wanted to actually take your job. I think okay. they wanted to, but I don't know, everyone... Kind of came, but they, they seem to watch that you're a, 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 an expert uh, about these intercultural sort of business relations. Mm -hmm. And everyone, I'm not sure they had a very clear idea exactly of what you do, but if, whatever it is, they want to do it. <laughs> well, the thing is, I have a job title that sounds kind of sexy. I'm a cross cultural communication specialist. That's awesome. And I would go like, I would add um, emperor to the end of that. I would kind okay. of add, a, add something. Star I'm also Wars queen in. of the world too, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> that's the other nation. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so you have this title though. I have this title and well, you know, what I always tell people is I had to create my own job because I could not find anyone who wanted to pay me to do what I wanted to do. Yeah, so that took some guts. I mean, it's kind of funny. Any, anyone can say, hey, I want to go and work and get paid by that person to do that person's awesome job. But you actually, there was no one you could go to to ask for that. I had to create it myself, yes. How long ago did you do that? 21 years ago. Wow. So I've been doing this for a while. Yeah. But even so, so okay, you've created your, your own job description, your own right. company, your own business. What, what is that business that you created? What yes. is it that you do? Well, um, I work with companies that are doing business globally. Yeah. About 80% of our clients are Japanese firms that have global operations. The yeah. other 20% are non-Japanese firms that are doing business with Japan, have subsidiaries here. Right. So it's almost always the apex is around Japan anyway. Right, the apex is around Japan, but with various different cultures. And yeah. so at this point, my team is global. Mm. Start, started the firm in the US, so at first we're focusing on Japanese firms in the US and yeah. American firms in Japan. And then we added a team in Europe. Yeah. And so we are, deal with Germans dealing with Japanese and Brits dealing with Japanese and people in Spain dealing with Japanese. Endless complications. Yes, <laughs> endless complications. And of course in Europe, it's very multicultural. So every right. office you were in in Europe has you know, 10 different multi you know, nationalities there. So yeah. um, we have a branch here in Japan. So we're dealing with Japanese companies who are dealing with people from all over the world. Yeah. We're dealing with companies from all over the world that are here. Yeah. Uh, we've got people in Latin America. So we do seminars in Mexico for Mexicans on how to work with their Japanese colleagues, yeah. etc. cetera. Uh, we've got people in um, China. We're also gonna be adding some people in the Philippines this year. I'm very oh, excited about. That's cool. So, yeah. Oh, so you have the, these teams and these people who work with you and for you, but what do they do? Okay. 
a lot of what we do is cross-cultural training seminars. Yeah. So our kind of our bread and butter seminars are the working effectively with. Yeah. So working effectively with Japanese for non-Japanese. Yeah. Working effectively with Americans or working effectively with Chinese or working effectively with Indians, etc. Yeah. That we give to Japanese. Yeah. We also do a lot of leadership still skills training and communication skills training. Yeah. All of which are suitable for the cross-cultural context a lot of times delivered bilingually yeah we do a lot of team buildings yeah so i mean so the question and the direct question i think that el camino had and that other people ask me as well is when you are looking to hire someone what do you look for what's what what what, what types of people do you i mean I, I know it's not a very big company right how, how many people is it and what are the what's the kind of profile of the background of people right. who work with you? okay and i've all mentioned there is actually a page with this on my site that unfortunately no one ever seems to look at so <laughs> we should point people to that okay that where's the page yeah. it's on the underneath the about jic it says employment and so that's like the last place anyone would look you realize that they go through facebook they ask the person who talked to you and i, I you know that's the place that you, you would expect to get the answers you would think and it's actually there so the, okay. the key <laughs> thing is is that in order to be a consultant you yeah. have to have a lot of experience to draw on so we're always looking for people who have a lot of experience what if you're someone who doesn't have much experience but feels like you do that's generally not the kind of person oh. we want for our, our, our work. Okay, well, <laughs> Cause, keep, cause, up hope. <laughs> keep up hope. <laughs> okay, but, but you know, not, we don't want them for our work at this point yeah. in time. Yeah. Um, but the thing that I always tell people at the beginning of their career is that you need to get a lot of experience. Yeah. And in our case, we're looking for people who have business experience, who are doing something where they were really in the crosshairs yeah. of all the cross-cultural issues and experienced it themselves. Because the most important thing that we find is that you know, the consultant has to be able to empathize with our clients. Yeah. And our clients are incredibly frustrated. And if you've <laughs> never been there yourself, yeah. you can't help them. And I completely understand and, and agree with you. At, at the same time, though, I mean, there are two approaches into that. There is the, you know, on the ground, the hands dirty business experience. And there is also the, that there are people from also from very academic sort of backgrounds as well. Right. We study this sort of thing extensively and I mean I could you, you could see there could be an application from that but you, you, you you're looking you, so you're basically baking on real hardcore relevant experience of, of, of managing intercultural issues Situations, that you yeah. can relate to the people that we're working with. Exactly. Oh, I think it's, it's relating to the people, but also having learned a lot of things through experience that you're able to share. Yeah. And also having, frankly, having a lot of stories to tell. Yeah. Because people relate to concrete examples. And you, if you can show, here's a really good example of something that worked or didn't work, that that's going to really drive home your point. So in my line of work right now, which is a complete secret and I will not disclose, but, but it's true, actually, pretty much every job I've done, there's always this tension where sometimes my job is to act like a referee. And you have, so the people who draw my attention are people who have screwed up in some sort of way. <laughs> um, and the thing is, there, when people have been through a disaster, like a, a really big sort of uh, trial, there are two sort of outcomes that happen from that. Either they go back and sometime you hear from them again and they've done it again and again and again, <laughs> or they go away and they become the best people uh, and they become the people you want in the next situation. In a way, almost screwing things up completely actually means that they'll learn the more complete lesson. I mean, either they learn or they don't. Right. Um, but the, it's kind of funny. People who I have made out as, okay, that is a guy I am not going to trust with anything from now on. Turns out, like, sometimes 12 months later, that is the guy I'm going to tell you to go and talk to and ask what he does because now he does everything right because he never wants to go through that again. Right, right. Someone who really learns from their experiences. And that's yeah. definitely something that we look for. Yes. <laughs> so, okay, so, so go and check out the About and, uh, I mean, check out the homepage anyway because it's a really interesting business. You do a bunch of other things. We'll talk mm -hmm. about right, your yeah. books and your other things as we go through the, the, the other episodes in this upcoming series. Um, but um, that is how you get to work for Rochelle El Camedo. So, uh, Get out into the coal mines and start chipping away at that coal and you'll get there. I okay. think that's the, the And there's one other thing I do want to mention though, yes. is that I don't want people to have the idea that you can only do cross-cultural consulting if you're a cross-cultural consultant. Because really you can Oh yeah. You can be effective at bridging cultures in any job. Yeah. And in fact the world is in incredible need of people who can bridge cultures in a wide variety of situations. And you know, there's a lot of interesting things you can do as an outside consultant, yeah. but there's a lot of things that only someone in-house can do. And I see so many situations yeah. at my clients where if they only had more people inside who could bridge the cultures that they'd have things be going yeah. a lot better. So 
you can be using cross-cultural consulting skills in any profession, really. Hallelujah. I mean, and this is actually, I think this is why we have such fun chatting, because I, I basically, in many ways, do your job exactly, you know, internally. Right. And we have some of the same challenges. Uh, getting people to appreciate the value of having someone around uh, to bridge these issues. Sometimes, and again, you don't realize the value until you're, you're forced to realize by, by circumstances. Right. Um, but yeah, that's right. That's both of us. Both of our bread and butter is getting the value of what we had recognized. I suppose. Right. I mean, exactly. I, I think it's super cool to someone who does it as part of as part of my day job. That the fact that you're able to take that out and make the you know make it make a business around that mm -hmm. is super cool. But that's right. And, and the fact is, is that if you're working for a Japanese company in America or outside of uh, Japan, or you're in Japan working, you know, we are all cross cultural consultants, I suppose, yeah. in some way. But that's the whole point. That's where you can prove, I guess, your. Uh, your background, you know, if you, if you really want to aim for some sort of specialization in the future, that's right. where you prove yourself. And it's just an extra value that you can add. Yeah. Um, okay, that's an awesome first episode. Just forget the time limits. Forget about them. This is, this is I know everyone was complaining. We, we said we're going to keep this to five minutes an episode, but uh, everyone was saying last time, they're too short. We're going to try to keep a good balance. We're going to have, we, we've got so many good topics, and the topics in this series are almost exclusively picked by you guys right. from the comments last time. Right. So, and if you're Thank watching you. this, <laughs> And you want to, and there are more topics you want for series three. I mean, now's the time to start in the comments below. Let us know uh, right. what you find interesting, what you would love us to talk about. Right, because we're going back. We went through all the comments from before to yeah. get the ideas for this time. So we this are looking at This is all taken them. from those comments. So, so get plugging away in the comments and uh, hang around. This time next week, uh, this will be another weekly show. Uh, we right. will be coming back and probably wearing the same clothes because I don't have much of a wardrobe. <laughs> Uh, and we'll see you again next week. So okay. uh, hang around and get ready for a, a new series of uh, Japan Business Time. Peace.